Uh, a very good morning to those of you who are aware I was down with COVID last week. As you can see, my voice is still a bit weird and a bit um, horsey. And I do still have a lingering cough uh, still around. So if you do cough, do pardon me. But I thank you for your prayers and well wishes that I was able to recover uh, to attend youth camp. I see some youth camp people around here. Woo! Fantastic. Give round of applause. I see some of them around. Right, thank you, youth camp members, uh, for being here. Youth, for being here. And um, thank you so that I can also preach today. Right, so I'm well enough to preach today. And today, I would like to preach from my favourite Christmas scene. Right, my favourite Christmas story, which is the nativity scene. And that is found in Luke chapter 2, verse 4 to 20. Let me read to you. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels have left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they have seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they have heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Well, in Luke chapter 2, verse 4 to 20, the verses that I just read, the narrative centers on the birth of Jesus Christ. Joseph and Mary, following the decree from Caesar Augustus, traveled to Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. Well, due to overcrowding, they found, they found shelter in a stable where Jesus was laid in a manger. Well, meanwhile, nearby shepherds receive a revelation from an angel announcing the birth of the Saviour. A host of angels joins the first angel and praises God, proclaiming peace on earth. Well, after hearing the angels, the shepherds rush to find the baby in Bethlehem and spread the news about the extraordinary birth of Jesus. Well, those who heard their account were amazed. Today, I want to talk about three groups of people. First, Joseph, second, Mary, and third, the shepherds. Well, with Joseph and Mary, we find their account in the book of Matthew and Luke. Joseph, a descendant of King David, he was a humble carpenter, known to be righteous and obedient. He faced actually a tremendous test. Right? This test was when he discovered Mary, his betrothed, she was pregnant. Therefore, it made him very distressed because he's obedient, he's righteous, right? He wants to uphold the law. While at the same time, he wants to spare Mary any disgrace, any form of embarrassment. So Joseph planned to quietly divorce her. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Well, Joseph, being righteous, obedient, faithful, 
he struggled. He struggled to obey this, right? He wanted to follow the law, which he is so used to following. But he struggled and he obeyed. He took Mary as his wife, fulfilling the prophecy by naming the child Jesus, our Saviour. So let's turn our attention to Mary, a young woman from Nazareth, chosen by God for a significant role. Well, imagine she faced confusion, social, social stigma from being pregnant without getting married. But at the same time, she obeyed the call. She demonstrated remarkable faith and humility. She humbled herself. And when the angel Gabriel conveyed the extraordinary news of her impending conception by the Holy Spirit, Mary's response was resolute. Resolute because she said in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, as what was read just now, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Now, subsequently, of course, the story tells us Mary gave birth to baby Jesus in a manger. But can you pause for a second? These two characters, they were tested. It wasn't an easy decision. They struggled with it to a certain extent, but they were faithful. They were ordinary people, right? We never, we have not heard of them until the New Testament. Ordinary people who grappled with discomfort and uncertainty to their extraordinary calling. But yet, but yet these two individuals clung steadfastly to God's promise. What was told to them, they held on to it, believe that it will happen despite the challenges that they face. Imagine the doubts and the fears they wrestle with, the pressure and expectation from society regarding Mary's pregnancy, the weight of giving birth to the promised Messiah in a lowly manger. Hearing all this from the angel, expecting a glorious birth, but actually end up giving birth in a manger, so lowly, so disgraceful, so unexpected. The Bible never specify any thoughts or emotions from Mary and Joseph. If you could interview them, I wonder what would they say. Right, but can you imagine the doubts? The doubts that they had. God, is this real? Did the angel really appear in my dream? Did the, is this really from you? The worries that they had, where would they go? How would they give birth? Would they have enough? From an unplanned pregnancy to an unexpected place to give birth to baby Jesus, what a turmoil of emotions. But why did God choose this unconventional path? It's because it was, it was through this very scenario that the word of God would be fulfilled. Fulfilling ancient prophecies about the birth of the Messiah. It was to affirm Jesus as the son of the Most High God, not merely the son of Joseph. This story also teaches us a vital lesson. When God calls us, it might not always be comfortable or straightforward. It may even demand us to step out of our comfort zone, to embrace uncertainty. But at the end of the day, it's to trust in His divine plan. And Mary, Joseph and Mary's journey exemplifies this unwavering faith in the midst of adversity. So friends, even when God's called in your life, even as you read the Bible and hear the word of God, it might seem puzzling or daunting to you, but remember Joseph and Mary's resolute faith. They trusted in God's timing, trusted in God's purpose, and trusted that He remained faithful in fulfilling His promise and word to them. Just like how He is faithful to promise His promises that is found in the Bible, no matter the circumstances that you are in. So as we celebrate Christmas this season, let's draw inspiration. Let's draw from Mary and Joseph, their example, as we embrace God's call in our life, His promises found in the Bible. We trust in His plan, His purpose, and that where He has placed you to be. As we persist in the faith, knowing that He who promised is faithful. And this especially so, right? As we look, see, smell, even, imagine you're in a manger with all the smell, giving birth, the doubts that you have. Imagine the situation that you're facing right now. You see in front of your eyes the news that you hear from your WhatsApp, 
from people telling you, the toxic behavior from people around you, the bad news or thoughts that constantly fill your mind. Let us learn from Joseph and Mary to hold on to the promise of the angel. And for us today, that's the promise found in the Bible. The Word of God revealed to us. Let the Bible be the primary and foundational word for us to live in our unsettling, anxious and ever-changing world. I encourage you to read, to study, to understand the Word of God through the stories, the letters, the Psalms, the words of wisdom, so that the Word of God can encourage you, convict you and even spur you on to grow closer in your walk with Him. Such that in your daily lives and challenges, the Word of God will propel you to pray and seek Him as you face these challenges in life, in the midst of your day-to-day activities, your day-to-day interactions, your day-to-day conversations with people which are so difficult, I ask that the Word of God will draw you to pray, to seek. Moving on to a nearby distance away, an angel appeared to the shepherds living out in the fields. They were tending their flocks at night, minding their own business, doing what they do every, every night. They were ordinary people, just like Joseph and Mary. And they were engaged in their daily routines when suddenly the extraordinary happened. An angel of the Lord appeared before them, surrounded by the radiant glory of God. Can you imagine their awe and fear at such a sight? It was both awesome and fearful. But the angel's message was one of reassurance and joy. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Right? Great joy for all the people. Today in, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The shepherds were given a sign. Sometimes as human beings, right, we ask for double confirmation. They were given a sign that the sign is that they will find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger because no other baby back then will be lying in a manger. Only baby Jesus. And suddenly a multitude of heavenly hosts joined the angel, praising God and proclaiming glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. What an astonishing revelation. What a proclamation. The long-awaited Messiah, the hope of generations have finally arrived. This is the Messiah that they were all looking forward to. But it didn't happen in the grand palace, in a first-class hospital, but in the humblest of setting, a staple surrounded by animals, welcomed by shepherds, ordinary people like you and me. The angels didn't tell them to go and investigate, go and find out. The angels merely proclaimed Proclaim what had happened. The shepherds wasted no time. They acted immediately. They hurried to Bethlehem and they found everything just as the angel had told them. They saw the baby lying in the manger, a clear sign, and their hearts were overflowed with wonder and praise. They spread the word about what they had seen and heard and all who heard were so amazed at these ordinary people sharing, testifying what they have seen, what they have heard, what they have experienced. So the shepherds have some profound lessons for you and I to learn today. First, the shepherds teaches us that we are to be humble. We are to be humble because they are not high-ranking or or prestigious members of society. Their presence at the announcements of Jesus' birth truly highlights that God's message of salvation is for everyone, for all, all ordinary people, all people, all walks of life. God values humility and often chooses the humble to fulfill His purpose. Second, the shepherds teaches us a lesson to be receptive to divine messengers. When the Word of God is preached, when the Word of God is shared to you, when you read the Word of God in your day-to-day activities, the shepherds reminds us to be people open and ready to receive God's message. We are to be attentive and responsive, just like the shepherds when they received the word from the angel. Third, 
the shepherds remind us to take immediate action. Upon hearing the angel's proclamation, the shepherd wasted no time. Even though they were not instructed by the angel, they wasted no time to act on what they have received, the message that they have received. They didn't doubt the message at all. They didn't question, is that really an angel or just uh, my outfit of imagination? Is the message real or maybe not so real? They didn't. They wasted no time but acted promptly. It teaches us really to act promptly when the Word of God calls us, when we are reminded and convicted by the Holy Spirit to act as soon as possible. Fourth, the shepherd teaches us to be a witness and testimony. After witnessing the miracle of Jesus' birth, the shepherds became messengers themselves, sharing the good news with others. Remember, they are shepherds. They are not preachers. They are shepherds. But they became preachers. They became witness, a witness to what had just happened. Their testimony spread and those who heard it were amazed and they wonder and wonder. They became instruments of spreading the news of Christ's birth, emphasizing truly the importance of sharing our encounters with God as we spread the message of hope, salvation to the people around us, whether it's our friends, families, especially in this time where there's so many gatherings of friends and families or even colleagues at work. Last but not least, the fifth lesson the shepherds teachers taught us is to worship and praise. When the shepherds arrived and saw the newborn baby, their reaction was to glorify and praise God. Right? They didn't ask, oh, how, how many days you take to reach here? How's the weather? They didn't ask all this. When they saw the baby, they praised and worshipped. The praise and worship, our response as we encounter Jesus is one of worship. It's a reminder for us to respond to the presence of God with reverence, with praise, with songs, with proclamation. And the shepherds give us, give us this wonderful example. Therefore, in, in the shepherds' humility, recepti uh, receptiveness to the divine message, their prompt action, their willingness to share and their faithful obedience. They show us that God often reveals to those who are ready to receive Him. Ordinary people like you and I, we can be like the shepherd too, to be used by God to accomplish extraordinary purposes. Well, I titled this sermon to be the first Noel because in French, it means Merry Christmas. As we approach Christmas, but more than that, the modern English word comes from the, the middle word Noel, which the English dictionary defines as a shout of joy or Christmas song, right? A shout of joy. Right? The, the word in Old French could also have derived from the Latin natalis, meaning birth, since Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Christ. It was natural for people to refer to the celebration as the nativity or the birth. So if I add in another meaning to it, another possible root meaning, possible root meaning of Noel is from the, again from the French, which means news, right? As the popular carol says, the first Noel the angels did say was to the certain poor shepherds. The meaning of news certainly makes sense in that context because the shepherds were spreading the news of baby Jesus born for us, for you and me today. So you link it all together. I right, got all these from um, the website godquestions.com so you can refer to it for more information where this song came from, the meaning behind it because it's significant to us in our Christian walk. The birth of Christ brings good news and it's a joy to each and every one of us. In a short while, we will sing the, the first Noel as a song of response. And I chose it today because the angels have already proclaimed this wonderful good news. It's already proclaimed 2,000 years ago. Today is you and I. It's up to you and I to respond. Whether you want to respond like Joseph, like Mary, or like the shepherds. Respond like Joseph or Mary. We are obedient to the call in our lives. Whatever the circumstances in our life, whether it seems dire, we hold on to the promised work of God because He is faithful. He is faithful and He is faithful. 
Or may we be like the shepherds, humble, receptive, prompt to action, to act and share with praise and thanksgiving to people around us. Whether you are like Joseph, Mary, or the shepherds, may we respond in this Christmas season. May we respond in earnestness and humility. So I give you some time as we come to the Lord in prayer. This time of a season of Christmas, the message has already been proclaimed. Jesus is born, a Savior is born for you and I. Joy and peace to you, my fellow brothers and sisters. What is your response? What is your response? Will you respond either like Mary, Joseph or shepherds or all of, all of the above? May we truly put Christ central in our life as we live for Him and Him alone because He is faithful. So Father, I pray a special blessing and prayer for my fellow brothers and sisters here as they ponder in their hearts just like Mary. As they have seen all that is happening in their life, the miraculous work that you have performed in their life, they treasure in their hearts. May they respond coming before you in faithfulness. May you respond in faith, taking that courage as they approach 2024 for a new walk with you, with re uh, returning to you. That truly, Father, you are central in their life. Ask for your love and your grace to continue to fill us as you approach this season of Christmas and New Year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music>